And the earth is a child wishing only to grow But with patience and love tend each seed that you sow And the earth like a child will grow tall, straight and true So be good to the land and the land will be good to you Hi, I'm farmer Terry Jones, the fifth generation to work on these hillsides here in Shelton, Connecticut. And I have a very special book. It's a love letter and I'm going to read it in celebration of Earth Day. It's a love letter to our planet. Thank you, Earth by April Pulley Sayre. How appropriate, Earth Day in April. No wonder she wrote this beautiful book. Dear Earth, thank you for water and those that float, for slippery seaweed and stone. Thank you for mountains and minerals that strengthen bills and bone. Thank you for air, even fishy whale breath. Thank you for colors and coastlines and beach. Thank you for tiny and towering, for trees and vines that reach. all shapes that repeat. Thank you for curves and prickles and parallels and patterns. Thank you for leaves and stems and buds, for plant parts we can eat. Thank you for sounds and storms and seasons for struggles and pale in-betweens. Thank you for rays and radicals and overlapping greens. Thank you for jumbles, ingredients for soil and bright new growth in spring. Thank you for those that crawl. Yes, all, all, all. Even for those that sting. Thank you for sunsets. For sky room for birds. For edges eyes can roam. Thank you for beginnings for endings, and for lifetimes. Thank you for being our home. A beautiful, beautiful book. At my favorite time of the year, spring. I love spring and Earth Day. I think the colors are, although more subtle, they're truly equal or more beautiful than in the fall, as you'll see as you look across our valley. Now I've stood up from this granite bench. It's Connecticut granite, and it was placed here in 2010 to honor the uh, 50th anniversary of the Connecticut Christmas Tree Growers Association, which my father, Philip, generation Four was instrumental in starting in 1960. And to honor his 50 years of service, uh, this bench, and you'll, you'll see the writing closer, but it's Connecticut granite on this beautiful hillside. In front of me is the well that was dug in the 19th century by hand, and it provided water for the houses by siphoning up and then down by gravity and it also 
provided water for the cattle in, in the barn. And can you imagine it was running through a good old fashioned lead pipe? The barn to the left, as we look down the hillside, these beautiful uh, grapevines that my son, Jamie, generation six, planted. It's sort of a demonstration vineyard. So when you folks sit at the, uh, for wine tastings, they can feel they're really, and they literally are, by the vineyard. And the barn was built in 1867 and added on to in 1900. And the far part added once again in 1944. And when I grew up, it was home to 40 lovely ladies, the Holstein milking cows. And every day, they had to be milked twice and taken care of. And they would come out on this hillside in the evening and, and spend the night up in the pasture, the night pasture. And next to the barn is what we call Philip's Pavilion. And again, to honor Philip, who loved all things forestry, he, he had a for, Yukon 4-H project in 1936, and that led to the establishing of the Christmas tree business. And some of the, the pines that he planted after Philip's death in 2015, we harvested. They were over 100 feet tall and a wonderful uh, creator of beautiful uh, wood frame buildings, Steve Strong, again, Connecticut, put that decagon together to honor Philip. So you'll, you'll see what a beautiful thing that is grown right here at the farm. That's what we're all about, homegrown. And as you do look across the valley, the, the uh, the great pine swamp with the, the clumps of eastern white pine, which Henry David Thoreau called a mature white pine is nature's ultimate success. And I think that's something we should all think about on Earth Day and every day. So there they are, along with the swamp and red maples and their hues of, of red and, and subtle, even a, a hint of purple. It's almost like describing the taste of a wine. These very subtle uh, uh, scenes in nature, which are truly, truly, it was a stroke of genius to have Earth Day in April. And across the valley, the beautiful Pumpkin Seed Hill, which we were able to purchase uh, in 1985, else it would have grown 84 houses. But I think all who visit the farm agree both spiritually and environmentally and experientially it was one of the best things we ever did and it's protected with conservation easements forever. And I'll close with the Eastern, uh, yeah, rather the European larch which you see just, it's a, a deciduous conifer. It has needles and they shed in the fall, kind of unusual. And they're just starting to green up. And that was planted in an amazing year, 1947. It was planted in the same spring that I was born. So we're both 74 years old this April of 2021. And um, the tree is a wonderful place for our raptors, our, our red-tailed hawks and other um, uh, birds sit in the top and have an unobstructed view. So I will close with that. Hopefully the tree and I will continue for a few more years. <laughs> and I pay tribute to all the generations uh, now we are, Jean and my grandchildren, our grandchildren are generation seven. And I'll leave you with the thought that this farm has been very successful 
but the secret of the success of the all these generations of Jones boys have been the women that they have invited to come and be their lifetime partners. It has made all the difference because of their zest for hospitality and helping create the experiences that folks have when they arrive here to harvest our crops and sip our wine. So have a wonderful spring. Be good to Mother Earth. She is our mother. And you know what our mothers do. If we misbehave, we get punished. So please, be kind and be good to Mother Earth, our only planet. Thank you. So be good to the land, and the land will be good to all the farmers here at Jones Family Farms, thank you for listening to Storytime. We hope to see you visiting our farms and participating in bringing in the harvest. Our website is the best resource to answer questions regarding any of the seasons on our farm.